All right, so everything that you see behind me here, this is everything that I'm gonna be taking out on all of my handyman jobs from this point into the future. It's probably gonna change up a little bit. This is always a dynamic system, but I've gone through everything I own. I've separated tons of stuff out. I've whittled down, I've added, and now we're at the point where this is my handyman business starter kit. So let's go over some basic stuff real quick so it doesn't have to stay in the way like this ladder. This is one of those multi-position ladders. It's gonna get you up on top of most of the tallest roofs you ever need to get on top of by fully extending everything in every direction. And it's also no taller than me, so this is gonna fit even inside a minivan or some smaller vehicles if you don't have a large vehicle to use. But this ladder, it's gonna take care of most of your business. Now, this is my favorite little ladder here, my little gorilla. I use this one for almost everything. I only bust that ladder out when this one isn't tall enough. Otherwise, this gorilla is just, for a thousand different reasons, an outstanding ladder. I recommend getting yourself one. There are knockoff versions of it that look very similar that are not quite as good. I do recommend the actual gorilla brand. This is a great ladder. Next, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all this stuff down and show you, and I'm going to tell you why I have it and to what extent I think it's necessary to continue to have it. So this right here is my smoke detector kit. Inside this kit, we're going to have a minimum of five 120-volt plug-in battery backup smoke detectors and a minimum of five battery-operated, just sealed battery-operated, no 120-volt plug-in detectors. That's going to get us through more than 90% of any home that we work in. It's very rare for them to have more than five. Some have six, some have even more, but nine times out of 10, if you have five of each, that's going to get you through any of these jobs. And then up on the top, I also have things like, like the nine volt batteries that are going to go in the smoke detectors. I also have some specialty batteries and I have these specialty batteries as well. And I also have just like a few extra pigtails and stuff for the smoke detectors. But this is my smoke detector kind of slash battery kit. This, I'm going to say, you pretty much always need to have with you. There's a very high likelihood on a daily basis that you're going to need at least one smoke detector or battery. All right, next, um, we've got a framing square. To tell you the truth, I don't think we need this. I almost never use mine. But every now and then, I just do need to know if something is square or not. This comes in handy for that. But if you don't have one, don't worry about it. You'll get by just fine without one. Next. Oh, yeah. This is my Husky Toolbox. This is just your standard, average, everyday, just wrenches and sockets and all of that good stuff. You're typically not going to be doing a lot of work with, like, the sockets. This is more for working on my vehicle should my vehicle break down while I'm out working on jobs. But it also serves as a backup for things like we've got these little nut drivers that you can put in your drill. We've got your star bits, your Torx bits. We've got Allen bits. We've got just about every kind of bit you can imagine in here that you can put in your drill. So it's gonna come in handy for that too. Um, if you don't have one, again, not the end of the world. You can 100% run your handyman business without this. So don't sweat it if it's just not something you can get on your list yet. Next, a couple small items here. Uh, this is an extendable pole. It's a three section, so this thing will extend really, really far. It doesn't matter if you're putting a broom handle on the end of this to get cobwebs up on a 16 foot high ceiling, or if you're putting your little bulb changer attachments on the end of this to change some super high bulbs or using it for painting. I only have one, I only need one, this is the only one, and this is just going to come in handy enough that you're gonna find you're gonna wanna keep it around. These bolt cutters here, you're not gonna need them all the time, but you are gonna need them often enough to go ahead and get a pair. I think this was like $26 at Home Depot. You're gonna be cutting off lock boxes from rental homes when they've lost the key to the lock box or the ability to get into the lock box, or you're gonna be cutting padlocks off of like shed doors and stuff like that. So go ahead and get yourself one of these. They're not very expensive. They don't take up much space and you will absolutely need them. Next, this is going to be, and I'm gonna say for sure, by the way, like most of these kits back here, 
You don't have to have these to start out. It'd be great if you did have them, but you don't have to have them. A lot of it's just inventory. In fact, 75, 80% of all of these kits behind me are just inventory, and you're not gonna need all the inventory in the world. However, this kit right here specifically is my garbage disposal kit. You are going to need this. You're gonna need a spare garbage disposal in your inventory. It's gonna be great if you can put that in kit form. So this one I'm gonna say you do need to have. If you don't know what goes in this kit, you gotta go watch the videos. I make videos for all of these things for both the work that I do with the kit and how to build the kit itself, but you will need a garbage disposal. That's gonna be just part of your bread and butter going forward. All right, guys, this right here is my EDC bag. And what I keep inside this EDC bag, this of course can change over time. This is not a static thing that never changes. I add items that I think are gonna come in handy I remove items that aren't really coming in all that handy and are taking up space. And there may or may not be one or two small items missing from this one on any given day. But overall, this is gonna take care of your needs. We've got a little voltage tester. And we've also got a proper multimeter. I think everybody needs to learn how to use one of these and you need to have one. You need to have a good one, in fact. Uh, that's just a random file that happened to have been in the front there. Up here, we've got my outlet tester. So as you can see, this is sort of all the electrical stuff is right here in the front. By the way, this bag has been a great bag. It's CLC. I got it at Ace Hardware. I still see these for sale at Ace Hardware all the time. I do have to say, after four years, some straps finally broke off, but that's actually from leaving this thing in the sun, in the front seat of the truck or the van sitting in the sun, just getting beat down by the sun every day. I do think if you take better care of yours than what I did mine, it's going to be fine. But for a good three and a half of the four years, this bag has been a great bag that has been extremely sturdy. So I do think that if you want to get a bag, this is a good one to get. Now I've got a standard little drill bit set here, and these cut metal or wood. You don't need to get both, just get the ones that cut the metal and they'll also cut wood. Got some blue tape. Always need some blue tape. There's another little mini multimeter. Sometimes if I'm going in for something quick and electrical and I don't think I'm going to need everything, I can just grab this thing out of here and shove it in my pocket and figure out what's going on with nothing more than that. Next is my Allen wrench set. I'm actually replacing an entire bin full of Allen wrenches with just this one little set right here. It's basically all you're going to need. We've also got a little countersink drill bit here. This is mostly for doing sink bottoms. Stud finder, which I'm probably going to get rid of. I've never needed this thing, really. I don't think I've ever... I keep adding it back in because it feels like a thing a handyman should have. But the truth is, I can find studs without a stud finder. And I really hardly ever need to be finding studs anyways. Got a couple knives, right? Just for mud work, scraping, whatever you need them for. Little bit of dry lock. This is not WD-40. This is dry lock. So this will work in all kinds of situations where you want to use a dry lube, and it'll also work in most of the situations where you need a wet lube. Super nice little torpedo level. I love this thing. It's magnetic, it lights up, it doesn't take up much space. It's super tough, it's super tight. I like that one a lot. A uh, pair of dikes. Tiny little crowbar. This, this works, you know, I do have... So I do have this one, and sometimes I need this one, usually for exterior work like decks and roofs and whatnot, but 90% of the time, this little guy is going to get you by just fine. Uh, just a little bit of silicone in there. Here we have, this is the one chisel I'm keeping lately, and I may add other chisels back in, or I may take chisels out altogether, but this is the one chisel that I do keep in this bag lately. And this is mostly for doing door frames, anywhere where you've got your strike plates on your door frames and or on the door itself. That whole little assembly there where everything latches up and meets, I oftentimes find myself needing one of these to just tidy everything up in there and make sure that everything fits and latches properly. Now these vice grips here, I can probably take out. I probably will take out. I'm just always afraid if I remove these, I'm gonna be in a situation where I need them. But the truth is I don't need them much, so you could probably remove those. Oh, look, I do have another chisel in here, but it's not intended to be in here. I'm only going to be taking the half inch from now on. Now, this is my cold chisel. This will be staying in here. I don't need it often, but when you need a good, solid, 
cold chisel for some masonry, you have to have one. Nothing else will do. So this always stays in here. This is one of my favorite tools. In fact, I'll put this over here because I want to make a video on my favorite tools. Do I have any favorite tools over on this side? Yeah, I do actually. This multimeter is definitely a favorite of mine. This torpedo level is a favorite. That's a favorite. That's all the favorites at the moment. Let's see, do we have anything else in here? Oh yeah, I've always got, by the way guys, you can never have enough razor knives. Just get yourself as many razor knives as you see fit and toss them into every little crook and crevice. Uh, a few trash bags, always keep them in here. Moving on to the outside, we've got another razor knife. We've also got a quarter inch wrench. This is for breaking free garbage disposals. A little flashlight. Moving into the next pocket. In the next pocket, we have uh, just a handful of different types of caulk. It's always good to have your caulk on hand. Uh, looks like two of these are actually the same, but keep plenty of caulk with you at all times. You're a handyman, you're just gonna be using it. We've also got this folding camp saw here. Now this thing hasn't come in super handy, but it doesn't weigh much and it just sits in the bottom of the bag. So I'm probably gonna keep it in the bag for now, but I will say I don't need it very often. So I may end up taking this out in the future. Hammer, of course, gotta have a hammer, obviously. And down here we have, we have a very teeny tiny little Phillips right here. This is gonna be for things like thermostats. You're not gonna need it often but when you do need it, you're really gonna need it. And we also have, this would be a uh, T10, the T10, Torx 10. This is what you're gonna use on exhaust fans on bathroom and kitchen ceilings. Almost all of these exhaust fans, when you go to change the motor, are going to need a T10, so keep a T10 with you at all times, and put one on your keychain if you can. And then this is a tiny common slotted. This is going to be mostly for Now, this is not my inventory. I'm not keeping this towel bar with me, but these towel bars, TP holders and whatnot, lots of things that have set screws are going to have set screws that use a very teeny tiny common slotted screwdriver. This is also gonna get you into bedroom doors, the bed and bath doors, where you can lock them from one side and then the other side has a little hole to slide something into to open and close. This is gonna get you in and out of those when tenants for some reason leave those locked and you need to get through. And we also have a little awl. I don't need this often, but when you do need one, you do need one. So we have an awl. And then something I'm not seeing in here now that usually is in here that I like to keep separate with these tiny tools is going to be a 1 16th inch Allen wrench. A 1 16th inch Allen wrench is going to be used as a set screw. Now I do have my Allen wrenches here and I do have another spare set of Allen wrenches here. But I also like to have right in this little pocket with all my little stuff, with my pens and pencils, and see I have another spare garbage disposal wrench here. In this little spot with all of my tiny stuff, I do like to keep just another spare 1 16th inch Allen wrench. And the reason for that is because you're going to need them a lot, and when you can't find yours, it's going to be very upsetting to have to drive all the way to Home Depot for a stupid teeny tiny little Allen wrench. So have plenty of them and put one of those on your keychain too if you can. This here is a little file. This is a round file and what this is for, for me, the file material goes all the way to the end of this. They don't always. The reason I carry this one around is when I'm doing strike plates, sometimes you need to remove some material from a strike plate. Sometimes it's gonna be faster to just grab this guy and just get in there and work that strike plate for like 45 seconds to remove just enough material to make everything smooth. And then we've got a bunch of pens and pencils right here. Obviously you're gonna need those. We've got our screen spline tool. I always keep this with me because I need it quite frequently. Also, it looks like this one got covered in paint, so I'm gonna have to clean that up. I didn't even notice that, but that won't take long to do. Ah, here we go, another favorite right here. Another favorite, I don't know if it'll focus on it, but this tool right here is made by WISS. W-I-S-S, -S. it's a Crescent, actually it's made by Crescent. This says Crescent WISS. 
This is a titanium set of shears. I've been using these for a really long time and they have sincerely become one of my favorites. In fact, when I can't find this, I freak out and I start looking everywhere for it because I just can't stand the thought of not having this with me anymore. So I'm gonna add that to my favorite tools over there and make sure I didn't throw any other favorites over here. Nope, not yet. Another little flashlight. Can't have too many flashlights, especially the tiny cheap ones. Here's another little common slotted screwdriver. Like I said, some of these tiny little things that you're gonna use all the time have a few spares. They don't take up much space or much weight. And something that you normally wouldn't expect to find inside here is gonna be toggle bolts. It's not a tool, but I use them often enough that I just keep a spare set inside here in case I can't find mine. I use toggle bolts to mount pretty much anything in a bathroom. Towel bars, TP holders, towel hooks, towel rings, washcloth rings, all of those things in the bathrooms. In fact, a lot of times when I'm putting up my uh, vanity light set as well, sometimes I'm attaching those with toggle bolts also, so I always keep toggle bolts with me. Just a random set of pliers and cutters here. Set of channel locks. Channel locks are one of my favorite sets of pliers. This may be because when I was a little kid, this just happened to be what I had and I used it often enough that I just kind of learned how to use it for just about any situation. But I love channel locks and I always have them with me. You also have two sizes of crescent wrench. It's what I would call a large and a small. I don't really need a medium size in between, just a large and a small crescent wrench. Gonna cover most situations. Got my Phillips screwdriver. I'm also now noticing that my common slotted screwdriver I bet I threw it in this drawer earlier. Let's see. Nope, that's another Phillips. Ah, there it is. All right, it is over here in this drawer. So, um, we've got your Phillips, and then you've got your common slotted. Now, I do have lots of screwdrivers in all of these kits. I try to build these kits out so that they have everything I need, and I don't even need my EDC bag. But regardless of having them in the kits, I do like to have a common slotted and a Phillips screwdriver. Also, I tend to go with the longer versions, not the short versions, because there are times when I absolutely need a longer version and I can't do the job without one. And it's very rare that I need a shorter version. So I just keep the longer ones with me. Got another set of vice grips. Again, I may just get rid of all of my vice grips. I don't use them very often. It's just that when you do need them, you really do need them. Check out the rest of these. That seems like it's gonna be everything. So this is my EDC bag. Again, there are things that are gonna go into this bag that aren't in here today, and there are things that are in this bag today that are gonna end up coming out. This is an always evolving situation, but this is what I keep in my EDC bag right now. Uh, one tool you're not gonna see here today that I do keep with me, but my son has it right now, is my chop saw. Now my chop saw, I don't actually take with me on the job every single day. I only take it on days that I know I'm gonna be needing it, but I should have a chop saw up here. It's just that my son has mine at the moment. Next, we've got our little toilet auger or whatever you wanna call it, our, our snake, our drain cleaner. This guy right here, I don't use super often. Typically, if they're trying to send me clogged toilet jobs, I do recommend that they just go ahead and send that to a plumber because I don't have the larger, more professional plug-in or gas-powered gear that's really gonna get all the way down into those lines. So this is only gonna get the job done about half the time. However, I do still keep it and I do still honor those requests when they ask me to go take care of those. And next, this little guy right here, I have to tell you, I'm a huge fan, a huge, huge fan. I didn't think this could possibly do a very good job for me, but I bought it and I've used it quite a bit. And the thing is, guys, you know, we're not framers. So we're typically, as a handyman, we're not gonna be doing trim carpentry on a whole house. We're not gonna be framing a whole house. Now, some of us are gonna be working on decks and sheds and stuff. And if that's the case, you're gonna want a bigger compressor that you can plug in. But this tiny little battery operated guy, this is just a DeWalt 20 volt. For 99.999% of the jobs that I do, this is more than enough. You can blow off a couple work surfaces with it if you're doing some framing. And I have used this for framing, for replacing little six foot sections of fascia. 
where I'm only going to need at most maybe a couple dozen nails from the framing nailer to go through this. You don't want to run your batteries down, right? So don't try to use this where you've got it running all day, just sucking the juice out of your batteries. But for most stuff, this is more than enough. This guy has impressed me and I will not be found without it anymore. This definitely goes on the list of my favorite tools. Next, we do have a folding dolly and I'm not even gonna bother unfolding it right now, but this is a little folding dolly that I picked up at O'Reilly's. I don't know that I'm gonna keep it with me forever yet, but I have used it a few times. It has been really nice to have the few times that I have needed it. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep it for now and see how often I use it, but I'm not gonna keep a full-size dolly with me. And this guy, again, doesn't seem to take up much space or add too much weight. So it's a nice little addition that I've had lately. And obviously, you're gonna need a level, both for leveling things and as a straight edge. You just need a level, so go ahead and have a level. Uh, we've also got just my little Gerber multi-tool. I don't even know where I've lost the, uh, the little belt pouch that it goes in, so hopefully I find that soon. But even if I don't have it on my belt, this is very handy to have. Oh, and now, in fact, I'll just leave the bin up here and I'll transfer the tools over. This, as you can read, is my power tools. I've got them all in this one box right now, and I don't always. This may turn into two boxes, because be to get it all in one box, it has to be packed pretty tightly. But then again, I don't really need everything in this box all the time. So let's go through and see what I do have. First things first is going to be this jigsaw here. By the way, I love this jigsaw, this Makita. I actually bought this as a backup one day because my battery operated jigsaw, it was one somebody had given me. It was like a Ryobi or something cheap and it just took a crap on me in the middle of a job. So I ran to Home Depot, didn't have a lot of money to buy a nice new 20 volt cordless DeWalt one. So I looked for a corded jigsaw and this Makita was real affordable. And then I went and actually used it. And I will tell you what, this was the smoothest, tightest, best performing jigsaw I've ever touched in my life. So I really like this guy. And this is my official jigsaw for my business whenever I need one is that, that's not going to be a cordless. I also have a cordless, which you'll see in a minute. Extension cord. This is actually a brand new one that I haven't used yet. I just threw out my old extension cord yesterday. The insulation was all sun damaged and cracked and falling off and there was exposed wiring and stuff. So this is my new extension cord for my business. We've got two drills here. Uh, this one is a hammer drill. So this is both hammer and just regular drill function. And then this is just a regular drill. And the only reason I even have this guy is just as a backup to this one. Nine times out of 10, I'm just gonna be taking in my hammer drill because like I said, this functions as a hammer drill and as a regular drill. And then this guy is just a backup drill, nothing more. Next. We've got my 20 volt Sawzall. And yes, there's no blade in it. The reason there's no blade is because I have bits and blades. I have a kit for all my bits and blades. If you keep the blades in here, number one, they don't fit in here very well. And number two, the blades will end up getting bent and damaged. So I have a kit for bits and blades that I can grab and throw a blade in here when necessary. Got a little heat gun. The heat guns is generally just one purpose and that's going to be a lot of countertops and a lot of shelving and just a lot of furniture in general you're going to have the uh, formica band that goes around it's not always formica it's other types of bands but whenever you have the finished wood bands that go on the edges of different products those are typically put on with an adhesive that is meltable it's like a plastic that melts and when it cools it bonds so sometimes when you have those little strips coming off of the shelves like up in the cabinet you can just take your heat gun and you can heat that up and push it back on and it's going to seat just fine there's a few other uses for this but that's the main use and of course no handyman is complete without his multi-tool these guys are just so outstanding it does look like I need a new blade, but like I said, I do have my bits and blades here, and that's exactly why I don't keep these in the box like this. Typically, I would be taking this out and then throwing the tool in the box and putting the blade back in there because this blade is no good. 
but I do have more blades. So multi-tool, we'll set that aside over here. Next, another favorite of mine. I love this guy. This is my nailer. It's just a Brad nailer. It's an 18 gauge. It's almost never going to be the tool that you're actually using for a permanent attachment of any one thing to any other one thing. However, this guy is so super handy for just a million different scenarios where you need to temporarily attach something to kind of get it into place or to hold it there. This guy will do a great job. And then after you get it attached with this, you can go back and put your proper screws or your proper nails or your proper whatever other attachment methods you're using. Next, see this shouldn't be in here either. Where is, I don't even have the tool to get it out. That's probably why it's in here. This is my hammer drill. I try to have a corded backup for my most important cordless tools. And one of the things that I find I sometimes need the corded backup for is a hammer drill. So let's say we're going into cinder block. We're probably just going to go ahead and use my cordless over here. But if we're going into like a back patio, if we're going into a back porch where you've got an overhang and you've got posts holding up the overhang and those posts are held down, they're held in place with these big metal mounts that keep them up off the ground and keep it secured to the slab. The bolts that go down in there are half inch. So when you need to drill half inch holes in a cement slab and you need to do, let's say six of them, you're not gonna wanna destroy your cordless tool just for that. You're gonna wanna grab your corded tool and you're gonna wanna use the corded for that so that you don't go through too many cordless tools. Of course, we've got a skill saw. Not much to say about this. If you're a handyman, you're just gonna need a skill saw. Slide you over there. Got our grinder. And again, I shouldn't have this blade in here. I try to take them out. It looks like I haven't done a good job of it recently because I have my flaws just like everybody else. But this guy I use for so many things. You'll notice if you were working with me, not you will notice, but you would notice if you were working with me, that this is basically my go-to for cutting metal. It almost doesn't matter what kind of metal I'm trying to cut or what the reason is that I'm trying to cut it. I'm gonna probably go to my grinder with a cutoff wheel on it, and that's about the only thing this gets used for. So you're gonna use this for bifold door rails, you're gonna use this for bypass door rails, you're gonna use this for cutting fence posts, you're gonna use it for cutting just anything at all made out of metal all the time. This is my metal cutting tool. Oh, and this baby. Let me tell you something. If you need to cut through a whole bunch of cinder block, guys, I had to go to Home Depot once to get um, like the big giant one. It's got this ginormous like 18 inch diamond blade on it. It's gas powered. You start the thing up and you're trying to cut through a block wall, like maybe to open up an opening from four feet to six feet to put a bigger gate in or something. Those ones that you rent are junk. They're just absolute crap. It did not do the job. So in a pinch, my dad told me that you could go to Home Depot and just get yourself a good plug-in, you know, not, not a cordless. You're going to need a powerful 8-inch grinder with a brand new 8-inch diamond blade on it, and that will get you through just about anything. And sure enough, this thing cuts through like butter. So this is always what I'm using to cut any kind of masonry. I'm cutting bricks. I'm cutting slump block. I'm cutting cement cutting sidewalks, doesn't matter. This is what I use for cutting masonry. And then of course, as I was mentioning earlier, having corded backups for your cordless tools, this is my corded backup for my skill saw. So if I'm cutting, let's say um, I'm doing some fascia and it's a little four foot piece of fascia and I need to rip that four foot two by eight into a four foot, two by seven and a quarter. If that's what I'm doing, I'm gonna use my cordless skill saw, or here we go, my cordless skill saw. However, if I need to rip 40 feet and take three quarters of an inch off of it, I'm not gonna use my cordless because I don't wanna wear out my cordless tools super fast. So I'm gonna use my corded and I'm gonna have a nice brand new thin blade on here and I'm going to just rip through that stuff way faster than I would have with a cordless anyways. And then finally, the last tool we have in here is going to be my jigsaw. This is my 20 volt cordless jigsaw. I love this thing. It performs really good. It's not as great as that plug-in Makita, but for not being, but for being cordless, this jigsaw is outstanding. And then the only thing left in here 
it's just tons and tons of batteries. All of my 20 volt DeWalt batteries are still in here. So I'll get all of this put away and then we'll dive into the next boxes. Okay, next. This is gonna be a pretty simple one here. This is mostly bulbs, mostly my bulb kit. However, at the moment, it's more like my bulb painting and spare parts kit. So what we have in here is this is all my painting gear right here along with some easy sand five because anytime I'm painting it's a good chance it's because I needed to do some mud work. So that's all the painting stuff doesn't take up much room but I also do have a few spare parts in here. I've got toilet paper holders, exhaust fan motors, uh, another toilet paper holder and that's about it for spare parts. I have some trash bags you know I have yeah some of these little rubber washers but otherwise this entire kit right here is basically light bulbs now I would like to have another bin just for light bulbs it'd be great to have two full bins of light bulbs but I'm trying to pare things down right now and I'm trying to consolidate and get lighter and faster so this is what I think I need to have in terms of light bulbs as well as what I think I need to have that I absolutely must have on hand in terms of spares and then, like I said, my painting kit right there. And some easy sand five. Get down in there, good. Yep. Pretty simple kit. And next is going to be my pressure washer. This little kit right here, you can get all of this at Home Depot. You've got your actual Ryobi pressure washer. You've also got, this is your hard surface cleaning attachment. You've got a hose right here, and I've got the hose to run the pressure washer here. This is a 120 volt plug-in, so you're not gonna have to deal with any sort of issues that have to do with gasoline or oil or anything like that. And then the actual sprayer attachment comes into two pieces. So this all packs down very nicely into this little kit. Now, I do not take this with me every day. I'm going to know in advance if somebody's asked me to pressure wash, then I'm going to know and I'm going to grab this kit for that particular day. But otherwise, this isn't something that needs to be taking up space all the time. And then finally, guys, we have all of my kits here. Now, most of this, as I mentioned earlier, most of this is inventory. A lot of these kits do have a lot of tools so that I can take them in and not even need to bring my EDC bag. But most of this is inventory. None of this is necessary. None of these kits at all are absolutely necessary. If you're trying to start your handyman business, you can build these one at a time as you go. As you start noticing that you get certain jobs over and over again, and you start noticing that you tend to be purchasing the same parts every time for those jobs and using the same basic, simple, cheap sets of hand tools for those jobs every time, you can just start building these kits as you go. Uh, thank you guys for showing up. Thank you for watching this if you've watched the whole thing. I love you guys. I hope you're out there killing it, and I'll see you on the next one.